Q3 was the first ever quarter of a decline in loan growth for Union Bank of India and adding to the bank's woes, the slippages have risen as well. Raj Kiran Rai, the MD and CEO of Union Bank of India joins us now. Mr. Rai, you know, loan growth has been on a downtrend. In fact, domestic loans grew just 8% year on year this time around. Uh, what is the trend looking like for the rest of the fiscal? Yeah, very good morning. The loan growth on the domestic side uh, is as per the projections, uh, it is around 8%. The overall book has degrown because of the shrinkage of business at the overseas book particularly, uh, uh, like bringing down the buyer's credit. So we expect that uh, the Q4 will be much more robust on the credit growth. Uh, even our overall book will uh, grow substantially because uh, the foreign branches have started growing now. Mm. And looking forward, uh, we will look we look forward for a double-digit growth on the credit side. Uh, good morning, Mr. Rai. Uh, is this lack of loan good growth morning. because the capital didn't come on time, and now that uh, you are about to receive capital, uh, you will be able to do better in FY20 or even in the fourth quarter? Uh, yeah, we expect some good amount of capitalization uh, in the Q4 that will definitely help us for uh, better growth. But uh, if you look at the domestic side of credit, like we have grown at 8%, we are not compromised on the credit growth. That way we are maintaining at that level. But definitely with capitalization, the growth will be much faster. Q4 itself, we will see that growth happening. Mm. And on the slippage side, there is a mention. See, if you look at the slippage of 2,900 crores, 700 crores came from uh, a slippage from the existing NPA accounts where the slippage happened on the non-fund based limits of these old accounts where oh. SBLCs and LCs got devolved. Okay. So, and even in the 2,200 crores, the corporate side slippage was very low. It can be, it may be approximately about 600 crores only. So as we said, the slippage on the corporate side has moderated a lot. So mm. it is coming from the RAM sector and uh, which is expected to moderate from Q1 of next year, both agriculture and MSME. We may have one more quarter of some slippages. After that, it is likely to moderate. So our projections on slippage stands and it is going to substantially moderate. What so is the RAM sector? The RAM sector actually on the MSME, uh, we had uh, seen about 700 crores of slippage. No, no, what is the meaning of... course on the agriculture side. So what is the meaning of RAM uh, Retail, agriculture and MSME. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Retail, agriculture and MSME. Okay. Actually, we can... Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Rai, you said 600 crores of corporate slippages is what you saw this time. But the non-corporate slippages remain very high at 3.4% of the overall loans. What is your target as far as non-corporate slippages go? Do you see more pressure there? Yeah, actually we may see a similar slippage in MSME and agriculture in the next quarter also uh, because MSME will moderate afterwards because we are seeing almost peaking of NPAs in MSME and this uh, 1st January circle of Reserve Bank of India on uh, restructuring of MSME will give us a good relief. So these accounts which are under stress as of 1st January, every account is being looked into. So like wherever it is not viable, they may slip in this quarter. But then all viable MSME accounts will be restructured. So that's why I'm telling that uh, uh, the slippage in MSME will be similar, uh, uh, likely to be similar in the Q4. But the Q1 of next year, we'll see a lot of moderation in MSME slippage. Okay. And agriculture has already started moderating. Yeah. Okay. So what is the percentage of uh, NPA in the MSME sector? And what is the percentage of NPA in mudra uh, loans? The MSME sector uh, is about 15% NPA as of now uh, and in Mudra it is around 7%. Okay. okay. Uh, your exposure to HFC has increased sharply this time around because of the portfolio buyouts. What's the overall NBFC exposure that the bank has right now and um, do you expect to see any further you know, asset quality pressure or stress because of your increased exposure there? No, actually, traditionally, uh, we are uh, strong on NBFC portfolio. Our uh, about 11 to 12 percent of our credit is in NBFC sector. Mm. Uh, we had some temporary issues uh, during the quarter because of the asset liability mismatches of some of the accounts. I think that is behind us. I think uh, all those issues are addressed. That is behind us. But anyway, we are uh, taking a very conservative call on NBFC expo exposure because we are close to 12 percent. But at the same time, we will not avoid this sector. Uh, there are good companies available in the NBFCs, better rated companies. Uh, more than 90% of uh, 
our uh, exposure to NBFC are uh, uh, rated A and above. So we don't see any stress in uh, coming from NBFC sector. How much capital have you requested from the government? And if that requested amount comes, will you use it to recognize and provide for more NPAs? Uh, at this point of time, we are not very sure about the quantum. We have put our request. So, like, uh, see, NPA provisioning is uh, as per the regulatory requirement. Mm. So, we are, go, like, uh, we are meeting all regulatory requirement on the aging provisions and the fresh slippage uh, provisioning. So, that will continue to happen uh, in the next quarters also. Uh, just because we have capital, uh, like, we may not go and make extra provisioning. But at the same time, whatever required provision as per the regulatory requirement will be done. And capital will be used both for provisioning okay. requirement if it comes and uh, also for the growth. Okay. So what is your exposure to the ILNFS SPVs? Yesterday, if you noted that uh, a letter has come from uh, uh, Jharkhand Road uh, to its trustee not to release the money. Yeah. Uh, this is the issue we are facing actually. But anyway, I will clarify that I don't have any exposure to this account, what you mentioned. We mm. have no exposure. And we have clarified that uh, uh, our major exposure to ILFS is on the thermal power plant. Okay. And uh, all other group companies of ILFS, our maximum exposure is around 200 crores. Out of that 100 crores is already recognized in NPA and another 100 crores is there. Only thermal power plant, uh, it is approximately between 800 and 900 crores exposure. Mm -hmm. Here also the similar issues uh, are there. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the, uh, it is also SPV. Uh, as of now, it is standard because they have serviced maybe up to November. So now after that, this NCLT order, uh, the monies are not flowing. But then I think um, this issue is being taken up uh, at the highest level so that the NCLT modifies the order because this... Uh, cash flows which are SPV specific, they have to be ring fenced and they should be available for servicing. So I think this uh, point what we are raising should be accepted. If it is accepted, then I don't see that uh, this major account uh, which uh, like constitutes the 90% uh, okay. exposure to ILFS <coughs> will not slip. Who, who is taking it up with the NCLAT? Uh, the banks have represented? Uh, the, yeah, banks have represented. Okay, okay, okay. All right, then we should hear from them uh, very soon. Mr. Uh, Rai, thank you very much indeed for joining us with all your details of uh, the Q3 numbers. Uh, so that's the Union Bank uh, position. They are expecting that corporate uh, slippages will slow down, but uh, there could be still one more difficult quarter for agricultural and MSME loans uh, in terms of slippages. All right, well, let's move on. Another corporate waiting by patiently just dial gains over a percent as the third quarter revenue guidance was in line with the management guidance, while other income doubles uh, this time around. Uh, Abhishek Bansal, the CFO of Just Dial, joins us now to talk about even the strong revenue growth that came in. Abhishek, thanks so much for joining us. Do you think you can scale up your revenue growth from mid-teens that you've done this time to, say, closer to 20%? Can revenue growth accelerate from here on? This particular quarter, revenue growth was 15%. Definitely the objective is to reach to 20% and above levels which uh, we were uh, doing about few years back. 15% revenue growth this quarter was highest in last 14-15 uh, quarters as I recall. Overall if you see uh, we have a database of 25 million listings and just less than 2% of the database is currently paying us. And even on the overall database itself there is a potential to possibly go to 70-80 million total uh, SMEs in India. So considering that there is a lot of scope to grow this particular revenue growth. So 15% I would uh, presume is the bare minimum that we have been targeting which we have been able to achieve. Okay. Uh, well, margins have moderated for the second quarter in a row. Why was that and what's the outlook? See, EBITDA margin is best seen on a YOY basis. On a sequential basis, margin slightly moderated due to the ad spends which were higher sequentially. So we spent about 19 crores on ads this quarter versus 10 crores in previous quarter. If you see overall for nine months, the EBITDA that the business has generated is about up 43% year on year versus about 14% growth in top line. So to that extent, on a nine month basis, margins have significantly improved. 
and considering there is a lot of operating leverage in the business, we expect margins to continue improving going forward as well. So when you say continue to improve in margins, any target in the margin band that you've set out? Target, obviously the first target is to in, uh, achieve say 30% on a full year basis and subsequently let's see how particularly margins build up. Uh, you know, uh, when you last spoke, you indicated that FY19 ad spend should be around 65 to 75 crore. Nine month ad spend was 40 crore. So, uh, will you maintain your guidance or lower it? First three quarters, cumulatively, we have spent broadly around 40 crores. On advertising, the thought process is that keep evaluating which particular mediums are working best for us. And uh, till the time it is about 7 to 8% of our top line, we are pretty comfortable. So no specific number per se, but uh, uh, basis uh, 60, 65 crores for the full year. That is what I expect overall ad spend to be. Okay, well, uh, finally, Abhishek, let me just try to squeeze in this. Traffic growth has been consistently at 25%. Uh, any reason to believe uh, that you will not be able to sustain this? No, definitely. We do expect this particular growth rates to sustain. The key reason being total traffic was about 134 million users, which grew 25% year on year. The key is the mobile traffic. So today, about 79% of our traffic originates from mobile. And mobile traffic at 105 million users grew about 43% year on year. So to that extent, uh, we do expect strong traffic momentum to continue. Okay, the sign of times, right? 40% uh, growth in mobile traffic. Thanks so much for joining us uh, and giving us that view. So that's Just Dial. We'll take a quick break. On the other side, fresh commodity trades lined up with our commodities editor, Manisha Gupta. Stay with us.